In the dawn of antiquity, amidst the whispers of legends, a humble village took root on the banks of the River Thames. Little did its inhabitants know they were laying the foundation for a city that would rise to greatness, shaping the destiny of nations and echoing through the corridors of history. In the annals of history, amidst the whispers of time, there is a story about a small village tucked along the banks of a great river. This town, which arose among the mist and murmur of the ancient world, would develop to become one of the most iconic cities in history. Welcome to the narrative of London, which starts with creating a city. Long before the rush and bustle of modern life, before the towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, there was a world unspoiled by human hands. London's foundations were established along the rich banks of the River Thames. The exact beginnings of this ancient hamlet are buried in mystery, lost to history and lore. But one thing is sure, London's story begins with the arrival of the Romans. Londinium, as it later became called, first emerged from the shadows of history during the height of the Roman Empire. In 43 AD, Emperor Claudius's soldiers crossed the channel and landed on the coasts of Britannia. Among their number was a legion of engineers charged with building a massive bridge across the Thames. This bridge, known as the London Bridge, would usher in a new period of affluence and power. Under Roman dominion, Londinium thrived as a centre of commerce and culture. Its streets were thronged with merchants and traders from all over the empire, and its forums were alive with political and philosophical discourse. Despite Roman society's grandeur and wealth, a darker undercurrent existed under the surface. Londinium witnessed history's ebb and flow over the centuries. It endured the storms of invasion and insurrection, demonstrating the endurance of its people. From the fires of Boudicca's insurrection to the crumbling ruins of Roman power, London's spirit stood firm through the ages. So, as we stand on the verge of history, let us travel back in time to a country where echoes of the past still linger in the air. In the heart of London, amidst the shadows of its storied past, lies the key to revealing the secrets of an ancient city. Welcome to the birth of a town. Welcome to the narrative of London. In 43 AD, Emperor Claudius's armies arrived on the coasts of Britain. The Roman army, led by seasoned general Aulus Plautius, marched inland in pursuit of victory and glory. Engineers and architects were among those who had the colossal job of establishing a presence in this distant land. With their disciplined troops and excellent engineering techniques, the Romans were well equipped for the challenges ahead in Britain. They brought military force and a vision of civilization and order which would forever change the island's scenery. Roman forces marched deeper into Britannia and discovered a strategic spot along the River Thames. They elected to create a new settlement, tucked between marshland and forest, known as Londinium. Londinium's proximity to the river and natural barriers made it suitable for trading and commercial hub use. The establishment of Londinium signaled the start of a new era for Britannia. Roman engineers began work on a network of roads, fortresses and public buildings, changing the face of the budding colony. At the center of Londinium was the Forum, a busy marketplace where merchants from all over the empire met to trade products and talk. Londinium grew rapidly after its founding, attracting immigrants and settlers from all across the empire. The city's streets were alive with activity as merchants hawked their wares and artisans worked their trades. Temples and public baths dot the countryside, demonstrating the Romans' fondness for luxury and pleasure. The London Bridge, a masterpiece of architecture that spans the River Thames was one of Roman London's most prominent structures. Built of stone and timber, the bridge connected the city to the rest of Britannia and beyond. Its building marked Londinium's rise as a central hub of trade and commerce in the Roman world. The city's culture and customs were diverse and dynamic. Soldiers, traders, enslaved people and artisans came to live in the city from the empire. The pulse of daily life rang through the streets as citizens went about their business, attending to both simple and essential things. For the wealthy elite of Roman London, life was a flurry of parties and politics. Lavish homes studded the countryside, their owners enjoying the comforts that came with their riches and prestige. However, even in the splendor of Roman society, the threat of bloodshed and upheaval loomed large. Despite its wealth, Roman Londinium faced empire issues. 
Boudicca, ruler of the Iceni tribe, revolted in 60 AD, rocking the city. Boudicca, leading a coalition of tribes rebelling against Roman rule, destroyed Londinium, burning it down and murdering its inhabitants. Despite such devastation, Londinium rose from the ashes, its vitality unaffected by the horrors of war. The city rebuilt and renewed itself in the following years, emerging more robust and resilient than ever. The legacy of Roman Londinium remained even after their dominion of Britannia ended. The remains of Roman Londinium still stand as a tribute to its creator's creativity and ambition, and the influence of Roman culture can be observed in everything from architecture to language. As we gaze at the ruins of Roman London, let us recall the vision and determination of the people who constructed this magnificent city. The narrative of Londinium contains echoes of our own challenges and successes, telling us that the past is not as remote as we might believe. Londinium's history is heavily influenced by the renowned general and statesman of ancient Rome, Julius Caesar. Caesar was born into an aristocratic family in 100 BC. He became famous for his military prowess and political intelligence, and eventually became one of the most prominent people in the Roman Republic. Caesar's link to Londinium originates from his military conquests in Gaul, modern-day France, in the middle of the first century BC. During these campaigns, Caesar first set his sights on Britannia, seeing it as a prospective conquest that would bring honor to Rome and solidify his conqueror legend. In 55 BC, Caesar led his first expedition to Britannia, crossing the English Channel with a force of Roman infantry and cavalry. Though the campaign was brief and ineffective, it laid the framework for subsequent Roman incursions into the island. Caesar's second trip to Britannia in 54 BC was equally unsuccessful, as logistical problems and intense resistance from native tribes prevented his attempts to establish a foothold on the island. Despite these defeats, Caesar's voyages laid the framework for future Roman conquests in Britannia, including the ultimate establishment of Londinium. While Caesar's direct role in the founding of Londinium was limited, his ambition and vision for Roman expansionism laid the groundwork for the city's eventual growth and prosperity. His attempts to conquer Britannia demonstrated Rome's interest in the island, paving the path for future Roman kings to pursue additional conquests. Emperor Claudius, the fourth monarch of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, is credited with building London. Claudius was born in 10 BC and succeeded to the throne in 41 AD after his nephew, Emperor Caligula, was assassinated. His contemporaries considered Claudius a foolish fool, but he would prove to be a wise and skilled ruler, supervising the Roman Empire's expansion and consolidation. Claudius's link to Londinium originates from his choice to conduct a full-fledged invasion of Britannia in 43 AD, nearly a century after Caesar's unsuccessful excursions. Claudius, bolstered by the Roman troops' force and led by his general's wisdom, set his sights on conquering Britannia, seeing it as a strategic and symbolic victory that would secure his rule and elevate Rome's status. In the summer of 43 AD, Claudius's soldiers landed on the coasts of Britannia, their flags flapping in the breeze as they marched inland, their sights set on the prize beyond the horizon. During this war, Roman engineers and troops established a footing on the banks of the River Thames, laying the groundwork for Londinium, which would eventually grow to become one of the empire's finest towns. Claudius's decision to invade Britannia and establish Londinium was a watershed moment in Roman Empire history, ushering in new frontiers of conquest and colonization that would change the course of history for generations. Though Claudius would never set foot in Londinium, his legacy lives on in the monuments and landmarks that bear his name, reminding us of the lasting force of vision and ambition in the face of opposition. Londinium has been a key trading hub for the Roman Empire since its founding. Situated on the banks of the River Thames, the city had easy access to maritime and overland trade routes, making it a perfect location 
for merchants looking to capitalize on the empire's enormous network of commerce. Londinium's strategic location at the center of the empire's economic engine made it a magnet for traders from all over the Roman world. Goods from as far away as Africa, Asia, and the Mediterranean flooded the city's busy markets, producing a vibrant tapestry of cultures and products. The Forum, the hub of Londinium's commercial activity, was alive with activity as dealers hawked their wares and customers bargained over pricing. From exotic spices and silks to excellent wines and pottery, the streets of Londinium were brimming with the empire's abundance, drawing people from all over. Londinium was a commerce city and a strategic military stronghold in Britannia. As the capital of Roman Britannia, Londinium functioned as the nerve center of the empire's military operations in the region, providing a critical base of operations for the legions tasked with preserving order and defending the empire's interests. Londinium's strategic location along the River Thames gave it an excellent staging point for military forays into the surrounding countryside. Roman soldiers could watch and control traffic along the river from its walls and defences, ensuring the city's and surrounding areas' security. Furthermore, Londinium's reputation as a military fortress meant it was well defended against potential dangers from within and beyond. The city's walls, built of solid stone and strengthened with earthworks, were a formidable barrier against possible attackers. At the same time, a garrison of skilled warriors stood ready to protect the city at any time. Londinium's dual function as a trade hub and military fortress reflected the symbiotic relationship between business and conquest throughout the Roman Empire. As the empire spread its influence into distant areas, towns such as Londinium arose as pillars of imperial authority, acting as both economic engines and strategic fortresses against external threats. The prosperity of London's merchants was inevitably connected to the protection offered by the empire's military power. Without the legion's protection, the city's markets would have been attacked and looted by roving tribes from the hinterlands. In contrast, the wealth generated by trade in Londinium aided in financing the empire's military expeditions, ensuring Roman power's continued expansion and upkeep. Despite its greatness, the city's heritage remains today. The remains of Londinium continue to stand as a tribute to its founder's ingenuity and ambition, while Roman culture can be found in everything from architecture to language. As we look at the relics of Londinium's walls and fortifications, consider how important this ancient city was in defining a nation's destiny. The narrative of Londinium contains echoes of our own challenges and successes, telling us that the past is not as remote as we might believe. As the Roman legions marched across distant lands, they stumbled upon a verdant island in the midst of the sea. Here, amid the ruins of ancient empires, they laid the cornerstone of a new city, a bastion of power and prestige that would endure for millennia. In the annals of history, amidst the whispers of time, there is a narrative of a city that spans the years. Its very name inspires visions of knights and castles busy markets, and towering cathedrals. Welcome to medieval London, where the past lives in cobblestone streets and ancient passageways. Long before the age of knights and monarchs, when the world was merely a tapestry of untamed wildness, a small town was nestled along the banks of the River Thames. This town, which arose among the mist and murmur of the ancient world, would develop to become one of the most iconic cities in history. Here is where the actual narrative of London begins. As the last vestiges of Roman dominance faded and the Dark Ages fell on Europe, 
London stood out as a beacon of light amid the darkness of uncertainty. From the ruins of Roman Londinium, medieval London emerged like a phoenix guarded by stone walls and immersed in Anglo-Saxon and Norman culture. It was a period of enormous change and turmoil, with the old order giving way to the new. With the demise of Roman influence, Anglo-Saxon settlers mixed with the vestiges of Roman civilization, forming a lively new community. Under the tenure of Anglo-Saxon rulers such as Alfred the Great and Edward the Confessor, London thrived as a political and commercial centre. However, William the Conqueror's arrival in 1066 dramatically altered the city. Following the Norman conquest, London experienced a period of rapid growth and expansion. The Tower of London's construction, as well as the migration of Norman aristocracy, signified the city's rise to prominence and influence. Life in medieval London was a patchwork of contrasts, with the nobles living in luxury and excess, while the ordinary people worked in the fields and factories. Despite these divisions, the city thrived as a crossroads of cultures and perspectives. Markets bustled with activity as merchants from all over Europe flocked to its shores and guilds and trade groups had enormous power over the city's economy. The Magna Carta, signed in 1215, offered the nobility vital rights and liberties while recognizing London's importance as a trading and commerce center. This treaty provided the groundwork for the city's future growth and prosperity, preserving its status as a beacon of freedom and democracy for centuries. As we explore the heart of medieval London, we discover stories of bravery and betrayal, victory and tragedy. From the luxury of Westminster Abbey to the squalor of the city's slums, every corner of this historic city tells a narrative, providing glimpses into a time long gone but never forgotten. Welcome to medieval London, where the past comes alive and history lurks around every turn. By the 10th century, London had re-emerged as a bustling urban centre, its population enlarged by waves of immigration and its economy bolstered by the burgeoning trade that poured through its streets. The City of London, a maze of tiny alleys and congested tenements surrounded by Roman Londinium's ancient walls, was at the centre of medieval London. The city's people lived and worked here amidst the clamour of trade and the bustle of everyday existence. Their lives entwined in a complicated web of social and economic connections. The lively markets of medieval London were crucial to the city's economic life as they allowed people to buy and sell commodities of all kinds. From the wide expanse of Smithfield Market, where animals and produce were dealt, to the small alleys of Cheapside, where goldsmiths and silversmiths worked, the city's marketplaces were the lifeblood of its economy. Merchants from all over England and beyond came to London to take advantage of its strategic location on the banks of the River Thames, where they could exchange goods and ideas with traders from other countries. Guilds played an important part in medieval London's economic and social life, regulating trade and commerce, while also offering support and protection to members. Each craft had its own guild, from the worshipful company of mercers, which controlled the lucrative luxury goods trade, to the worshipful company of ironmongers, which provided the city with necessary metalwork. Guild halls acted as these groups' headquarters, offering meeting space for members and serving as social and cultural hubs. Religion was an important part of medieval life and the churches and cathedrals that dot the landscape of medieval London exemplify this. From the towering spires of St. Paul's Cathedral to the tiny parish churches that dotted the city's streets, London was a city of religion with the tolling of church bells and monks' chants punctuating the rhythms of daily life. These ecclesiastical buildings operated not just as houses of worship, but also as hubs of community activity, hosting festivals, fairs, 
and other social gatherings all year. One of the most distinguishing aspects of medieval London were its winding streets and narrow lanes, which snaked across the city like a tangled web. These streets were a swarm of activity, alive with the sounds and scents of ordinary life. The clatter of horses on cobblestones, the cries of street vendors, and the laughter of children playing. However, for all their charm, London's streets can be unsafe and unpleasant, especially after dark. Crime and poverty were common in medieval London, and the city's small alleys afforded sufficient opportunity for thieves and cutthroats to do their trade. The Tower of London stands as a gloomy sentry on the banks of the River Thames, its massive walls and towers casting a shadow over the city below. The tower, built by William the Conqueror in the 11th century as a symbol of Norman power and authority, has served numerous purposes over its long and troubled history. Originally designed as a royal residence and fortress, the tower quickly became associated with imprisonment and execution, earning the moniker Bloody Tower. Over the centuries, it has housed a diverse range of prisoners, from political rivals to traitors and heretics, their fates sealed within its grim stone walls. Despite its grim reputation, the Tower of London is nevertheless a beautiful and historically significant site. Its magnificent white tower, with its characteristic Norman style, exemplifies the medieval builder's skill and craftsmanship. Within its walls, visitors can discover a treasure trove of royal regalia, including the crown jewels, whose dazzling magnificence belies the tower's dark history. Aside from its duty as a castle and repository of valueless, the Tower of London has a deeper meaning for the people of London and the country as a whole. It represents resilience and endurance, having survived numerous sieges and upheavals over the years. From the Norman Conquest to Henry VIII's stormy reign and beyond, the Tower has been a permanent presence, a quiet witness to history's shifting fortunes. Westminster Abbey, located across the Thames from the Tower of London, is one of London's most recognisable sites. The Abbey, a marvel of Gothic construction, has been at the centre of English ecclesiastical and political life for over a thousand years, serving as the coronation church for English monarchs since the time of William the Conqueror. From the minute one enters its sacred corridors, the Abbey oozes majesty and reverence, its soaring vaulted ceilings and elaborately carved stone arches, giving testament to centuries of worship and devotion. Visitors can trace the arc of English history here, among the tombs of kings and queens, poets and politicians, from the Plantagenet dynasty's golden age to the stormy years of the Tudor Reformation. However, Westminster Abbey is more than just a venue for royal spectacle and religious ceremonies. It is also a living witness to the continuing force of faith and tradition. From the everyday rhythms of choral evensong to the solemn ceremonies of state, the Abbey remains a focal point in the nation's spiritual and cultural life. The Tower of London and Westminster Abbey are twin pillars of London's cultural and historical history, each bearing witness to the city and its people's triumphs and tragedies from the blood-soaked dungeons of the tower to the glittering coronation rituals of Westminster. These landmarks represent London's duality, a city characterized by evil and light, despair and hope. Beyond their historical significance, the Tower of London and Westminster Abbey represent London's continuing endurance and vitality. Despite the passage of time and the ravages of war and revolution, they stand firm and unwavering, a tribute to the indomitable human spirit and the strength of faith and tradition to persevere in the face of disaster. As we stand in awe of these magnificent historical monuments, let us recall the many generations who came before us, their footsteps echoing down the hallways of time. For in the shade of the tower and the sparkle of Westminster, 
we may hear echoes of our own tales, reminding us that the past is not as far away as we might imagine, and that the spirit of London lives on in the hearts of all who call this great city home. In 1066, William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy, invaded the English Channel with an army of Norman knights, intent to take the English throne for himself. On October 14th of that year, William won a decisive victory over King Harold II in the Battle of Hastings, forever changing the course of English history. Following his victory at Hastings, William marched triumphantly to London and was crowned King of England on Christmas Day, 1066. With William the Conqueror's crowning, the city of London entered a new era, becoming the capital of a Norman-dominated country. William wasted no time in solidifying his influence and exercising control over the city of London. He commissioned the construction of the Tower of London, a vast stone stronghold designed to symbolize royal might and dissuade any rebellions. The tower would later serve as a royal castle, prison, and treasury, leaving an everlasting impact on London's skyline for centuries. In addition to his military victories and architectural undertakings, William the Conqueror implemented extensive administrative changes that transformed English rule. He commissioned the Domesday Book, a detailed survey of land ownership and taxation that revealed important information about the realm's economic and social situation. This massive project paved the way for the centralized bureaucracy that would rule England for generations to come. King Henry VIII, who ascended to the throne in 1509, inherited a nation plagued by internal strife and external threats. Throughout his reign, Henry used both crown power and church authority to change England's political and ecclesiastical landscape. One of Henry VIII's most significant moves was his separation from the Roman Catholic Church and the formation of the Church of England. Frustrated by the Pope's unwillingness to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, Henry declared himself supreme head of the Church of England, cutting connections with Rome and exerting his authority over the English clergy. Henry's religious reforms had a significant impact on London, which became a Protestant center as well as a hotbed of theological debate. The dissolution of the monasteries decreed by Henry in 1536 resulted in the confiscation of Hugi, quantities of land and riches, much of which went into the crown's coffers. This redistribution of wealth enriched the crown while also laying the framework for the rise of a powerful landed nobility in England. In addition to religious reforms, Henry VIII left his mark on London with ambitious building projects and urban planning initiatives. He commissioned the construction of several renowned landmarks, notably St. James's Palace and Hampton Court Palace, both of which represented royal authority and prestige. Despite his many successes, Henry VIII is likely most known for his turbulent personal life and six marriages. His desire for a male heir drove him to divorce two of his wives, execute two others, and leave one to die in obscurity. This stormy narrative of love, desire, and treachery captured the English people's imagination and continues to amaze historians today. William the Conqueror and King Henry VIII had a profound impact on London and English history. From the Norman conquest to the English Reformation, these two monarchs altered England's political, religious, and cultural landscape, creating a legacy that still exists today. The Tower of London's towering spires, the stately halls of Hampton Court Palace, and the bustling streets of the historic centre bear the stamp of William the Conqueror and King Henry VIII. Their reigns constituted a watershed moment in the city's history as it transformed from a provincial outpost to a thriving metropolis at the core of a growing empire. Let us remember the enduring legacy of William the Conqueror and King Henry VIII, 
as we gaze upon the monuments and landmarks that bear their names. In their deeds and decisions, we discover echoes of our own difficulties and achievements, telling us that the past is not as remote as we may imagine. In the halls of Tudor splendor, amid the intrigue of courtly politics, a queen's gaze fell upon a city in turmoil. From the ashes of rebellion and revolution, London emerged stronger and more resolute, a beacon of hope in a world torn apart by strife. Step into the rich tapestry of Tudor England, where power, politics and emotion mix to create a nation's fate. In chapter three of our journey, we will look at the Tudor age, a time of triumph and turmoil, grandeur and upheaval that left an indelible impact on London and the path of English history. From Henry VII's ascension to Elizabeth I's sparkling reign, the Tudor dynasty was a shining example of creativity and development. This chapter takes us into the heart of Tudor England, where rulers reigned with iron fists and velvet gloves, and a nation's fate was in the balance. Join us as we explore Tudor history, from Henry VIII's glittering courts to the busy streets of Elizabethan London. From political intrigue to religious turmoil, military conquests to artistic rebirth, the Tudor age was a period of unprecedented change and complexity. So, as we embark on this voyage through Tudor England, let us immerse ourselves in the era's successes and turmoil and learn about the Tudor dynasty's lasting impact on London and the soul of England. London's rise to prominence as Tudor England's political, economic and cultural powerhouse demonstrated the city's tenacity and adaptability. By the Tudor dynasty, London had solidified its position as the nation's throbbing heart, attracting aristocrats, merchants and artisans from all around. Under Henry VII's skilled leadership, London witnessed tremendous expansion and wealth. The king understood the value of building strong ties with the city's powerful merchants and guilds, investing in public infrastructure and creating an environment conducive to trade and commerce. Whitehall Palace, with its huge complex of palaces, gardens and administrative buildings, was the pinnacle of Tudor magnificence and power. Whitehall was first erected by Cardinal Wolsey in the early 16th century and then rebuilt and refurbished by Henry VIII, who turned it into one of Europe's most luxurious royal homes. Within the golden halls of Whitehall Palace, the royal court wielded power over state and government. The king received ambassadors and dignitaries, administered justice and ran the government. The palace's grand chambers and galleries were alive with the activity of courtiers and advisers competing for the king's favour and influence. As the seat of Tudor authority, London was a maelstrom of political machinations and intrigue. Ambitious courtiers and cunning aristocrats competed for status and power, while the king's advisers whispered secrets and spun webs of intrigue. The city's pubs and coffee houses were popular gathering places for the literati and intelligentsia, where they debated current events and traded gossip and rumors. London streets reverberated with the footfall of spies and informants as crown operatives kept a close check on the city's inhabitants. The Tower of London, with its dreadful reputation for incarceration and execution, loomed big in the national psyche, acting as a vivid reminder of the repercussions of defying the king. Beyond its function as a political powerhouse, Whitehall Palace had a significant impact on Tudor culture and society. The royal court, with its costly dinners, spectacular masks and exquisite entertainments, established the norm for courtly behaviour and aristocratic tastes. Furthermore, the presence of the royal court in Whitehall drew painters, musicians and thinkers from all over Europe, transforming London into a thriving hub of cultural exchange and creativity. Playwrights like William Shakespeare and composers like Thomas Tallis 
earned favor with the court, creating works of art that continue to captivate and inspire audiences today. Though the splendor of Whitehall Palace has faded with time, London's significance as a seat of Tudor power continues to this day. The streets and squares of modern London give testament to the city's illustrious history, with echoes of Tudor grandeur still audible in courtiers' whispered secrets and the solemn tolling of church bells. As we stroll through London's meandering alleyways, consider how important the city was in defining a nation's destiny and the trajectory of English history. From the Royal Court at Whitehall to the bustling markets of Cheapside, London, was the beating heart of Tudor England, a metropolis of power, distinction, and opportunity. The seeds of the Reformation were sowed long before the 16th century when simmering anger with the Roman Catholic Church's corruption and excesses began to spread throughout Europe. Johannes Gutenberg devised the printing press in the 15th century, which allowed for the quick distribution of ideas and knowledge, igniting discontent and laying the framework for religious revolution. With Henry VIII's ascent to the throne in 1509, England's Reformation was set in motion. Frustrated by the Pope's unwillingness to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, Henry broke with Rome and founded the Church of England, with himself as its ultimate head. This act of resistance laid the groundwork for the English Reformation, triggering events that would forever transform the nation's religious landscape. The Reformation caused significant theological upheaval in London, converting it from a stronghold of Catholic orthodoxy to a hotbed of Protestant enthusiasm. Churches and monasteries that had existed for centuries as emblems of Catholic piety were closed and desecrated, their valuables confiscated by the Crown and their clergy dispersed. In their stead, a new breed of Protestant churches formed, preaching salvation by faith alone and rejecting the Pope's authority in Rome. The magnificent St. Paul's Cathedral, once a bastion of Catholic worship, was converted into a Protestant preaching and worship centre, its soaring spires ringing with reformers calling for a return to Scripture's pure teachings. The Reformation had a far-reaching impact on London society's political and social fabric, in addition to its religious significance. The dissolution of the monasteries, ordered by Henry VIII in the 1530s, resulted in the confiscation of vast quantities of land and riches, much of which went to the crown and the burgeoning merchant class. This shift of resources supported London's economic expansion and solidified the city's position as England's financial hub. Despite its promise of spiritual rebirth and social reform, the Reformation triggered a surge of religious tensions and conflicts that would immerse London in chaos. The execution of Catholic martyrs like Thomas More and John Fisher, who refused to abandon their devotion to Rome, served as a sharp reminder of the risks of dissent in a nation torn apart by religious conflict. During the reign of Henry VIII's son, Edward VI, Protestantism rose to prominence in England as the young king and his councillors implemented vast reforms to purify the nation of Catholic remnants. However, this moment of Protestant success was short-lived as the accession of Henry's Catholic daughter, Mary Y, in 1553 marked the beginning of a harsh crackdown on Protestantism known as the Marian Persecutions. Mary's rule, which included the burning of Protestant heretics at the stake and the reinstatement of Catholicism as England's official religion, threw the city of London into panic and uncertainty. Protestants, previously inspired by the prospect of reform, were hounded and persecuted by crown agents as Mary sought to bring England back into the fold of Rome. Though the Reformation's theological upheaval has faded into history, its influence continues to affect London and England's character today. The formation of the Church of England, with its distinct blend of Catholic ritual and Protestant theology, established the groundwork for a religious settlement 
that would last generations. However, the wounds of religious separation and strife are deep, haunting the streets and alleyways of London with memories of a time when faith and politics collided in a battle for a nation's soul. As we look at the churches and cathedrals that witnessed this stormy period in London's history, let us recall the sacrifices and efforts made for the cause of religious liberty and conscience. The narrative of the Reformation contains echoes of our search for meaning and truth, reminding us that the pursuit of faith is laden with danger and opportunity. On a fateful morning in September 1666, a little spark erupted in Thomas Farriner's bakery on Pudding Lane. Fanned by high winds and fed by the timber structures that lined London's narrow streets, the fire swiftly expanded into an inferno that would consume the city for several days. The Great Fire of London rushed through the city at astonishing speeds, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Flames consumed homes, shops, and warehouses, forcing residents to go for safety as the fire burned unchecked. St. Paul's Cathedral's distinctive spire collapsed, leaving churches, markets, and guild halls burning ashes. As the fire grew, panic overtook the city, and efforts to contain it were unsuccessful. With crude firefighting apparatus at best and limited water supply, the flames raced unchecked, destroying everything in their path. By the time the fire was doused, four-fifths of the city had been killed, leaving tens of thousands homeless. Despite the damage, people showed resilience and drive. Sir Christopher Wren, the visionary architect, immediately developed plans for the city's renovation. From the ruins of the medieval old town sprang a new, modern metropolis with vast boulevards, great squares and magnificent structures. The Great Fire of London was a tragedy on a grand scale, yet it also acted as a force for change. The city's restoration converted London into a shining example of architectural ingenuity and urban planning, setting the groundwork for its future expansion and wealth. A scaffold was erected on Tower Green within the Tower of London's walls early on May 19, 1536. On that scaffold stood Anne Boleyn, King Henry VIII's colourful and enigmatic second wife, who had been accused of crimes against the Crown and sentenced to execution. Anne Boleyn's narrative is one of romance, ambition and tragedy. Her journey from obscurity as a lady-in-waiting to Queen Catherine of Aragon to the height of power as Queen Consort of England fascinated both the court and the nation. However, her failure to give Henry VIII a male heir, combined with political intrigue and personal animosities, would eventually lead to her demise. Anne Boleyn's trial and execution were surrounded by controversy and intrigue. Accused of adultery, incest, and treason, she stubbornly maintained her innocence till the end. Despite her emotional pleas and the lack of tangible proof, she was judged guilty by a jury of her peers and sentenced to death. The execution of Anne Boleyn caused shockwaves across the royal court and beyond. It was the first execution of a queen consort in English history signifying a significant shift in Tudor England's political and pastoral landscape. Henry V viewed Anne Boleyn's execution as both a personal tragedy and a political necessity. It also paved the way for his marriage to Jane Seymour, who would give birth to the long-awaited male heir, Edward VI. This solidified Henry's dominance over the English church as he continued his efforts to split with Rome and maintain the monarch's supremacy over religious matters. The events of Tudor England, such as the Great Fire of London and Anne Boleyn's death, provide insight into the era's accomplishments and turbulence. They witness Tudor England's lasting impact on the city of London and the course of English history, reminding us of the fragility of power and the whims of fate.
In the smog-choked streets of Victorian London, the clatter of machinery drowned out the cries of the dispossessed. Yet amid the chaos and upheaval, the city thrived, embracing the promise of progress and the allure of empire. Step into the grandeur and ambition of the Age of Empire, when nations competed for domination and exploration opened up new frontiers. Chapter 4 of our voyage takes us to this era of expansion and conquest, when the city of London played a critical part in moulding the fate of nations and the course of history. The Age of Empire lasted from the 16th to the early 20th century and was a period of unprecedented global exploration, colonialism and exploitation. It was characterised by the establishment of mighty empires and the spread of European influence throughout the world. At the core of this era of discovery and growth was London, the British Empire's metropolis and seat of imperial power. As we delve into the complexity of this era, we will examine the glories and tragedies of imperial ambition, the complexities of colonial exploitation, and the long-lasting impact of empire on London and the world at large. Join us as we journey through the age of empire, when kings' dreams and nations' aspirations collide globally, leaving an everlasting effect on human history. The Industrial Revolution, which began in Britain in the late 18th century, heralded a new era of mechanization and mass manufacturing. Steam engines, spinning jennies, and power looms transformed how commodities were created, ushering in an era of creativity and ingenuity. With its growing population and thriving economy, London was at the forefront of this industrial revolution. Factories sprung rapidly throughout the city, their smokestacks towering over the skyline as they produced items at an incredible rate. Textiles, iron and coal mining fueled the economy, luring workers from the countryside in search of jobs and opportunities. London's waterways and canals became commercial arteries, delivering raw materials to factories and finished commodities to markets. The emergence of factories radically changed the social and economic fabric of London. Previously, production was mainly decentralized, with artisans and craftsmen operating from small workshops or their own houses. The introduction of factories concentrated manufacturing, bringing vast numbers of workers under one roof and significantly increasing output. The manufacturing system provided new difficulties and opportunities. On the one hand, it employed thousands of people, delivering consistent pay and the prospect of upward mobility. On the other hand, it imposed terrible working conditions, long hours and low wages on many workers, particularly women and children. The railway was the most revolutionary innovation of the Industrial Revolution. The invention of steam locomotives and iron rails transformed transportation, allowing goods and people to move quicker and more efficiently than ever before. With its dense population and thriving industries, London was quick to adopt this new means of transportation. Railways ran throughout the city, connecting manufacturers to marketplaces, ports to hinterlands and suburbs to city cores. The development of significant railway termini, such as Paddington, King's Cross and Euston, altered London's landscape, while suburban lines expanded the city's reach into the surrounding countryside. The impact of railways on London's economy and society was significant. They permitted the extraordinary mobility of goods and people, creating new markets and opportunities for trade. They also fueled urban growth and development, sparking new communities and suburbs along railway lines. The Industrial Revolution resulted in rapid urbanization as people moved to cities for employment. London, already one of the world's largest cities, witnessed enormous population expansion during this time. The flood of rural migrants changed the city's demographics as neighborhoods swelled with newcomers from the countryside. However, besides job possibilities and growth, the Industrial Revolution resulted in significant social changes. The development of factories and railways 
resulted in new social divisions between employers and employees, affluent and poor, urban and rural. Working class neighborhoods were overcrowded and impoverished, while affluent industrialists constructed luxurious mansions in fashionable areas like Mayfair and Belgravia. London's change during the Industrial Revolution has left a lasting legacy. The city's skyline reflects its industrial background, with towering chimneys and warehouses as relics of a bygone era. The city's trains remain essential to its transit network, and abandoned industrial areas have been transformed into parks, museums, and cultural centers. However, industrialization has left a social and economic legacy in addition to a physical one. The inequities and injustices that arose during this time continue to influence London society, with disparities in wealth, opportunity, and access to resources still prevalent. The issues of urbanization, pollution, and social instability brought forth by the Industrial Revolution are still felt in London and other industrial towns worldwide. As we reflect on London's metamorphosis during the Industrial Revolution, we are reminded of the strength of human inventiveness and the challenges of advancement. The factories and railways that transformed the city's geography also reshaped its society and culture, leaving an indelible mark on London's fabric and the lives of its citizens. In the 18th and 19th centuries, London experienced extraordinary urban expansion. The city's population grew dramatically as people came to the capital for work and opportunity. The need for housing, combined with developments in transportation and infrastructure, prompted the creation of new neighbourhoods on the outskirts of the city centre. Mayfair and Kensington, located to the west of central London, witnessed considerable growth during this time. They were once agricultural pockets outside the city, but have since been turned into elegant districts popular with the aristocracy and wealthy elite. Mayfair, located in the heart of London's West End, has established itself as one of the city's most elite and prestigious areas. Originally built as a residential enclave for the aristocracy in the 17th century, Mayfair experienced remarkable growth and development during the Age of Empire. The streets of Mayfair were dotted with exquisite townhouses and grand palaces created by some of the most famous architects of the time. Wealthy families and nobles were lured to the neighborhood because of its proximity to the royal court and the West End's social scene. Mayfair quickly became linked with luxury and extravagance with its private clubs, exquisite dining venues, and stylish boutiques. Due to its bustling cultural scene and cosmopolitan atmosphere, the region attracted artists, writers, and intellectuals. Kensington, located west of downtown London, has a rich and diverse history spanning millennia. Originally a rural retreat popular with royalty and aristocracy, Kensington underwent substantial development and expansion during the Age of Empire. Kensington Palace's building in the 17th century signaled the area's development into a fashionable residential enclave. The palace, which housed royal family members, drew noble families and affluent landowners to the region. Kensington experienced tremendous urbanization and development during the 19th century, propelled by the expansion of London's transit network and the growth of industry and trade. Elegant terraced residences and garden squares sprouted up throughout the district, catering to the tastes and aspirations of the growing middle class. Kensington became famed for its cultural institutions and intellectual pursuits, with museums, galleries and libraries lining the streets. The area attracted artists, writers and intellectuals from all over the country, lured by its rich history, gorgeous surroundings and vibrant cultural environment. Today, Mayfair and Kensington remain among London's most attractive areas. The streets are dotted with exquisite homes, luxury apartments 
and premium boutiques, while green spaces like Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens provide a break from the hustle and bustle of city life. Mayfair and Kensington left a legacy of money, privilege, and cultural sophistication. These renowned neighborhoods have played an essential role in creating London's character as a global metropolis, attracting the rich and famous worldwide while also serving as emblems of the city's success and influence. As we consider the evolution of Mayfair and Kensington during the Age of Empire, we are reminded of London's ongoing attractiveness as a hub of power, culture, and innovation. These areas represent the city's rich history and lively energy, expressing the ideas and aspirations of previous and present generations. Queen Victoria rose to the throne of the United Kingdom in 1837 at the age of 18, and her reign lasted six decades, making her one of the longest reigning monarchs in British history. Queen Victoria oversaw dramatic change and alteration in London and throughout the British Empire during her reign. During Queen Victoria's reign, the British Empire reached its pinnacle, comprising territories on all continents and dominating over a fifth of the global population. London, the empire's capital, thrived as a cultural, commercial, and innovative hub. The city's population grew as immigrants worldwide flocked to its streets for opportunities, adding to its international character. Social and political change were also prevalent during Queen Victoria's reign. The Victorian era witnessed the rise of industrialization, urbanization, and empire, as well as the fight for workers' rights and women's suffrage. Despite the hardships of the time, Queen Victoria remained a persistent symbol of stability and continuity, gaining the devotion and loyalty of her subjects both domestically and internationally. During her rule, science, technology, and the arts advanced significantly. The Great Exhibition of 1851, held in London's Hyde Park, celebrated the triumphs of the Industrial Revolution and solidified the city's status as a hub of innovation and advancement. Meanwhile, cultural icons like Charles Dickens, William Makepeace Thackeray, and Oscar Wilde thrived in Victorian London's bustling literary environment. Queen Victoria's death in 1901 marked the end of an era, yet her legacy endured in the hearts and minds of her followers. Her name became synonymous with a period of wealth and growth, and her image appeared on coins, stamps, and monuments across the empire. Queen Victoria is still remembered as one of the most famous individuals in British history, conjuring up thoughts of dominion, elegance, and perseverance. Winston Churchill, the staunch politician and wartime commander, was born in London in 1874 and went on to make an indelible impression on the city and the world. Churchill's career extended more than a half century during which he held various government roles, including First Lord of the Admiralty, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Prime Minister. Churchill's leadership throughout World War II is likely his most incredible legacy. Churchill, Prime Minister, from 1940 to 1945, and again from 1951 to 1955, led the country through its darkest hour with courage, conviction, and steadfast commitment. His inspiring remarks and indomitable spirit encouraged a people to stand firm against the menace of Nazi dictatorship, as well as galvanized allied opposition to the Axis powers. Churchill's influence during World War II cannot be understated. His strategic vision and leadership were critical to the Allied victory, and his wartime collaboration with US President Franklin D. Roosevelt and Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin helped shape the post-war world order. Churchill's notable remarks, such as his Finest Hour address and We Shall Fight on the Beaches speech, are still iconic images of British courage and resilience in the face of tragedy. But Churchill's legacy goes far beyond his wartime leadership. As a writer, historian, orator, 
he left a legacy that inspires and influences future generations. His memoirs, talks, and articles provide insightful perspectives on leadership issues, political intricacies, and human resiliency. In addition to his wartime successes, Churchill helped shape post-war Britain and the world. As Prime Minister, he supervised the recovery of the British economy, the establishment of the National Health Service, and the decolonization of the British Empire. He also played an essential part in forming the United Nations and the NATO alliance, laying the groundwork for post-war peace and prosperity. Churchill's legacy is well documented in British history and his influence on London and the world continues today. Monuments, memorials and plaques throughout the city honour his memory and his words and actions continue to inspire leaders and residents alike to strive for excellence in the face of hardship. Winston Churchill remarked, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. By giving his all for the king and country, he established an enduring legacy of courage, leadership, and service that will never be forgotten. During the Age of Empire, Queen Victoria and Winston Churchill stood out as towering icons of leadership, grit, and tenacity. Their influence extended beyond their time and location, affecting the fate of nations and leaving an indelible mark on London and the globe at large. As we reflect on their legacies, we are reminded of the ability of leadership to inspire, uplift, and unite, as well as the long-term influence of individuals who dare to dream and strive for excellence. Beneath the glare of neon lights and the hum of traffic, a city pulses with life, its streets teeming with the hustle and bustle of urban existence. In the modern metropolis of London, the dreams of millions converge, intertwining in a tapestry of ambition and aspiration. Welcome to Chapter 5 of our historical adventure, which is about courage, conflict and resilience. In this chapter, we will look at how war and instability affected London and its people. War has always been a defining part of human history, altering national destiny and leaving an everlasting impression on urban landscapes. With its strategic importance and lively culture, London has not been immune to the ravages of war. From World War II's tragedy to the Blitz's tenacity, the city has faced numerous challenges and tribulations emerging more robust and resilient each time. In this chapter, we look at how war affected London and the people that reside there. From the trenches of World War I to the air raids of World War II, we see the bravery and sacrifice of those who lived through these trying times. We also look at how Londoners came together in the face of hardship, highlighting the power of community and resilience in times of disaster. Join us on a trip through history, experiencing the triumphs and tribulations of war and London's resilience. London's story demonstrates the human spirit's enduring strength in the face of tragedy, from the ashes of destruction to the phoenix of rebirth. When World War I broke out in 1914, it swept Europe into a tornado of bloodshed and destruction, with London at the epicenter of the fight. As young men marched to the front lines, the city became a hive of military activity, with hospitals, barracks, and weapons factories sprouting up to aid the war effort. However, despite its distance from the front lines, London was not immune to the horrors of warfare. German Zeppelin airships and Gotha bombers carried out repeated bombing raids on the city, targeting vital facilities such as railway stations, factories, and government buildings. The raids sparked widespread terror and destruction, killing or injuring thousands of residents and causing considerable damage to the city's infrastructure. One of the most notorious bombing raids of World War I took place on the night of May 31, 1915, when a German Zeppelin dropped bombs on the east end of London, killing 22 people and injuring many more. The operation, dubbed the First Blitz, 
ushered in a new age of aviation warfare and civilian misery. In addition to the bombing raids, Londoners faced the challenges of rationing and shortages as the war progressed. Food became scarce, prices skyrocketed, supplies ran out, and demand exceeded supply. Rationing was implemented to ensure equal distribution of vital supplies such as food, fuel, and clothes. Still, many people battled to make ends meet as the war wreaked havoc on the city's economy. World War II broke out in 1939, unleashing a new wave of carnage and desolation on London's streets. During the Blitz, as German bombers pummeled the city night after night, Londoners took cover in bomb shelters and underground stations, bravely and resolutely enduring the unrelenting bombardment. The Blitz, which ran from September 1940 to May 1941, was the most severe bombing campaign ever seen in London. Over nine months, the city was exposed to more than 70 massive attacks, with thousands of tons of high-explosive bombs and incendiary devices falling on its streets. Landmarks like St. Paul's Cathedral, the Houses of Parliament and Buckingham Palace were damaged or destroyed, leaving entire neighbourhoods in ruins. Despite the tragedy, Londoners showed tremendous grit and solidarity. Communities banded together to help one another, with neighbours sharing food, shelter and resources in the face of disaster. The spirit of the Blitz, exemplified by Prime Minister Winston Churchill's bold cry to keep calm and carry on, became a symbol of national solidarity and strength throughout the war's darkest days. In addition to the bombing raids, Londoners faced the trials of rationing and austerity measures as the war progressed. Food, clothing and fuel were in low supply. Therefore, severe rationing was implemented to guarantee that resources were distributed fairly and evenly. Despite the hardships of wartime life, Londoners remained steadfast in their will to persist and conquer the obstacles they encountered. London's experience throughout the World Wars left an indelible impression on the city and its population, molding the capital's character for future generations. The scars of battle may have faded over time. Still, the memory of those sad days lingers in Londoners' collective consciousness as a reminder of the sacrifices and resilience demonstrated in the face of adversity. Reflecting on London's experience during the World Wars reminds us of the everlasting power of the human spirit in times of crisis. From the trenches of World War I to the air raids of World War II, Londoners faced unspeakable adversity with courage and tenacity, refusing to be intimidated by the forces of death and despair. In the aftermath of the war, London emerged more robust and more resilient than ever, a monument to its people's tenacity. Conflict scars may still be visible, but they serve as a reminder of the sacrifices made and the resilience demonstrated in the face of adversity. And as London looks to the future, it knows that no matter what obstacles it faces, the spirit of perseverance and resolve that took it through the darkest days of war will always prevail. As the summer of 1940 began, the threat of invasion loomed large over Britain. Following France's defeat, Nazi Germany set its sights on the English Channel, determined to take Western Europe's final stronghold of resistance. For Londoners, the prospect of invasion was palpable as the menacing rumbling of German bombers resonated across the Channel and air raid sirens screamed at night. In the face of this existential peril, Londoners refused to succumb to terror, from dock workers on the Thames to merchants in the East End. The city braced for the impending storm, ready to defend their homes and way of life from the forces of tyranny. The Blitz began on September 7, 1940, when the Luftwaffe launched a continuous bombing assault against London. Wave after wave, of German bombers bombarded the city, bringing death and destruction from above. From the East End to the West End, no part of London was spared the devastation as bombs rained down 
on homes, workplaces, and landmarks. Even as the city burnt and the air was thick with smoke and ash, the spirit of London remained unbroken. Ordinary folks emerged from bombed-out buildings to help their neighbors and rescue the injured. Firefighters worked valiantly to extinguish the fires, while medical staff cared for the wounded with courage and compassion. Another struggle occurred in the skies above London between the RAF and the Luftwaffe for air supremacy. With its back against the wall, the RAF rose to the task, marshalling its forces to repel the enemy's attack. Spitfires and hurricanes roared across the skies, battling German bombers in dogfights that would decide the nation's fate. The Battle of Britain was a complex and unrelenting conflict in which both sides suffered significant losses. However, through sheer tenacity and better tactics, the RAF could blunt the Luftwaffe's onslaught, repelling wave after wave of enemy aircraft. The skies over London became a fight with the city's fate on the line. Throughout the worst days of the Blitz, the people of London refused to give in to despair. From the rubble-strewn streets of the East End to the magnificent halls of Buckingham Palace, the city banded together in a show of unity and perseverance that inspired the country. Prime Minister Winston Churchill summed up the city's tenacious spirit when he proclaimed, we shall fight on the beaches, on the landing grounds, in the fields and streets, in the hills, we shall never surrender. Despite the devastation caused by the bombing strikes, life in London continued. Theatres, movies and restaurants stayed open, providing an escape from the mayhem and destruction. Amidst the destruction, Londoners' spirits shone brightly, a light of optimism in a war-torn world. Following the Blitz, London emerged bruised but unbowed, a monument to its people's tenacity and determination. The city bore the marks of war, with its streets littered with rubble and its buildings reduced to rubble, but its spirit remained intact. The Blitz's legacy remains on in Londoners' collective memory, serving as a reminder of the grit and sacrifice of those who experience the bombing raids. Memorials and monuments serve as quiet sentinels of the city's resilience, remembering the memories of those who fought and died to protect their homes and way of life. As we reflect on London's role as a beacon of hope and defiance during the Battle of Britain, we must remember the sacrifices of those who came before us. Their grit and resilience in the face of hardship remind us of the human spirit's ability to overcome even the most formidable obstacles. During the dark days of the Blitz, St. Paul's Cathedral was a beacon of hope amidst the chaos and destruction, its massive dome a common sight on the London skyline represented defiance in the face of hardship. However, as the Luftwaffe dropped bombs on the city, St. Paul's became a target, its ancient stones shuddering with the intensity of the blasts. The cathedral's roof was the first to catch fire, with timber beams blazing like matchsticks when incendiary bombs fell from above. Firefighters fought heroically to rescue the historic landmark, focusing their hoses on the blaze as smoke billowed into the night sky. But their efforts were futile, and the entire structure was soon consumed in flames, its once proud spires reduced to burning ruins. The demolition of St. Paul's Cathedral was a blow to Londoners' morale and a reminder of the city's suffering during the war. Despite the devastation, a determination arose to repair and restore this renowned landmark to its former beauty. As the dust settled and the fires were doused, London began a massive effort to reconstruct and restore the city. Led by architects, engineers, and city planners, the post-war reconstruction effort attempted to repair the war's devastation and establish a new, contemporary city that reflected its people's ambitions. The rebuilding of prominent landmarks like St. Paul's Cathedral was vital to this project. Despite considerable damage from the Blitz, St. Paul's was deemed structurally sound and worthy of restoration. A team of talented craftsmen and artisans 
was recruited to reconstruct the cathedral, utilizing traditional methods and materials whenever possible. The restoration of St. Paul's Cathedral was a labor of love that lasted over a decade. Skilled stonemasons meticulously restored and replaced broken stonework, while craftspeople replicated elaborate wood carvings and plaster work to match the cathedral's original form. The renowned dome, which had been severely damaged during the war, was painstakingly repaired and fortified, guaranteeing that it would symbolize hope and resilience for future generations. St. Paul's Cathedral was finally reopened to the public in 1960, more than 15 years after Wubi Waitu ended. The restoration work was a triumph of expertise, perseverance, and collaboration, returning this famous landmark to its former glory while guaranteeing that it would continue to inspire and uplift future generations. The restoration of St. Paul's Cathedral sparked celebrations across London and beyond. It served as a symbol of the city's endurance and determination in the face of adversity. The cathedral's rebirth reminded people of human endeavor's ability to overcome even the greatest of problems and testified to the undying spirit of the people of London. Today, St. Paul's Cathedral is one of London's most recognized buildings, demonstrating the city's and its people's endurance. Its unique dome symbolizes hope and inspiration, a beacon of light in times of darkness. It reminds us that despite the most formidable obstacles, there is always the chance of rebirth and renewal. Amidst the flickering glow of candlelight and the strains of Elizabethan music, a playwright takes to the stage, his words igniting the imaginations of all who hear them. From the theatres of Shakespeare to the galleries of the Royal Academy, London blossoms into a cultural mecca, a beacon of artistic brilliance in a world hungry for inspiration. Step into the vivid world of the cultural renaissance, a historical period when creativity, intellect and ingenuity came together to highlight the human condition. This journey chapter will look at an era of unprecedented artistic brilliance, intellectual curiosity and cultural revival that swept through London and beyond. The cultural renaissance lasted from the 14th to the 17th century and was a period of significant transformation and regeneration. Emerging from the shadows of the medieval period, Europe saw a resurgence of interest in the arts, literature, science, and philosophy. In London, this cultural revolution found fertile ground, resulting in a flourishing of creativity and expression that would leave an indelible mark on the city and determine the trajectory of Western civilization. Let us immerse ourselves in the vivid tapestry of artistic masterpieces, literary treasures, and intellectual advances that marked the cultural renaissance. From the theatres of London's busy streets to the pages of revolutionary books produced by the newly developed press, the cultural renaissance encourages us to explore the pinnacles of human achievement and the depths of human imagination. Join us as we explore this unique period in history when the limits of knowledge and creativity were pushed to new heights and the legacy of the past mingled with the promise of the future. During the Cultural Renaissance, London was a beacon of inspiration and enlightenment, with its streets reverberating with the voices of artists, thinkers and visionaries who dared to imagine a better world. The 1960s saw a seismic upheaval in the fashion industry, with classic styles giving way to striking new trends and avant-garde creations. In London, a new wave of youthful designers and fashion icons emerged, defying past rules and redefining the essence of style. Mary Quant led the fashion revolution with colorful young designs that caught the day's spirit. Quant's miniskirts, geometric patterns, and brilliant hues became synonymous with the swinging 60s 
when young women discovered a new sense of freedom and self-expression. Along with Quant, Vivian Westwood, Ossie Clark, and Barbara Hulanicki of Bieber pushed the frontiers of fashion by experimenting with uncommon materials, strong silhouettes, and provocative designs. Their designs blurred the distinction between haute fashion and street style, ushering in a new era of sartorial creativity. The stores on London's Carnaby Street and King's Road became the focus of this fashion revolution, attracting crowds of trendsetters, celebrities, and fashionistas eager to embrace the latest trends and make their statement. Swinging 60s designs ranged from mod-inspired looks to psychedelic prints, reflecting the era's spirit of revolt and innovation. As London embraced daring new trends, it became a hub of musical creativity, resulting in a dynamic and diversified music industry that captivated listeners worldwide. From the raw energy of rock and roll to the deep sounds of Motown, the 60s music resonated through London's streets and clubs, establishing a generation's soundtrack. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and The Who were at the forefront of this musical revolution, with thrilling concerts and chart-topping anthems that captivated millions. The Beatles, in particular, became synonymous with the swinging 60s, with their catchy songs and inventive studio techniques defining popular music. However, London's music culture featured more than just rock and roll. The city also embraced the sounds of jazz, blues, folk, and psychedelic rock, with legendary venues like the Marquee Club, Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club, and the Roundhouse hosting a wide range of musical talent. In addition to fashion and music, the swinging 60s saw an artistic resurgence, with London's galleries and studios serving as incubators for creativity and experimentation. Artists like David Hockney, Bridget Riley, and Peter Blake pushed the boundaries of traditional art forms, adopting new techniques and mediums to produce works that captured the spirit of the time. Pop art became a dominant force in the art world, with artists pulling influence from consumer culture, mass media, and popular iconography to create vibrant, colorful compositions that challenge traditional ideals of beauty and taste. Works like Hockney's A Bigger Splash, Riley's Op Art Paintings, and Blake's album covers for the Beatles became famous emblems of the swinging 60s, encapsulating the energy and excitement of the time. London's galleries and museums, such as the Tate Gallery, the National Gallery, and the Victoria and Albert Museum, hosted groundbreaking exhibits and retrospectives featuring recognized masters and emerging artists. These organizations became centers of artistic activity, instilling a sense of community and collaboration that drove the era's creative spirit. As the swinging 60s gave way to the 1970s, the memory of this vibrant decade reverberated through the streets of London and elsewhere. The decade's fashion, music and art left an unforgettable impression on the city, defining its identity and inspiring future generations of artists, musicians and designers. The spirit of the swinging 60s, defined by invention, experimentation and a rejection of the status quo, is still alive and well in London today. From Camden Market's unique street style to Shoreditch's cutting-edge galleries, the legacy of this dynamic age can be found throughout the city, demonstrating the ongoing force of creativity and self-expression. In the complex tapestry of the cultural renaissance, certain personalities emerge as luminaries whose impact extends beyond their disciplines, altering the cultural environment of their time and leaving an enduring impression on future generations. Among these giants are the Beatles, David Bowie and Vivian Westwood, artists and visionaries whose ingenuity and inventiveness transformed music, fashion and popular culture and whose legacies continue to resound in the hearts and minds of millions worldwide. From their humble beginnings playing in Hamburg bars 
to their rapid climb to international superstardom, the Beatles embodied the spirit of the cultural renaissance, tearing down boundaries and challenging traditions with their revolutionary approach to music and performance. The Beatles' classic successes, such as Hey Jude, Let It Be, and Yesterday, grabbed the imagination of millions around the world and became synonymous with the spirit of the 1960s. However, the Beatles were more than just a band. They were cultural pioneers who valued experimentation and creativity. They pushed the frontiers of music and popular culture in ways that still resonate today. Their impact went beyond music, influencing fashion, art, and social norms, opening the way for a new era of creativity and expression. Few musical innovators shine as brightly as David Bowie, the chameleon-like musician whose ever-changing persona and boundary-pushing music enthralled listeners and critics. Bowie's career exemplified the power of reinvention and artistic progress from his beginnings as a mod-inspired folk singer to his transition into the otherworldly Ziggy Stardust and beyond. With albums like The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars and Heroes, Bowie stretched the frontiers of rock music, recklessly fusing genres and styles. His theatrical performances and avant-garde fashion sense enthralled spectators, while his thought-provoking lyrics and mysterious persona questioned conventions and resisted classification. But Bowie's influence stretched beyond music, fashion, film, and art. His androgynous style and gender-bending images challenged traditional notions of masculinity and femininity, leading a new generation of artists and fashion designers to value fluidity and self-expression. His acting career, which included iconic performances in films like The Man Who Fell to Earth and Labyrinth, demonstrated his versatility and charisma, solidifying his place as a cultural legend. Few designers have impacted the fashion world, like Vivian Westwood, the renegade designer whose rebellious attitude and avant-garde aesthetic reshaped the landscape of British fashion while challenging the status quo. From her beginnings as a boutique owner on London's King's Road to her current stature as a worldwide fashion icon, Westwood's career has been marked by creativity, provocation, and a bold devotion to self-expression. Westwood's renowned designs pushed the frontiers of fashion, combining aspects of punk, fetishism, and historical costume to create a bold, daring, and unquestionably British style. From the famed punk collections of the 1970s, including the infamous Sex Boutique and collaboration with Malcolm McLaren, to the beautiful couture creations of the 1980s and beyond, Westwood's designs have consistently broken convention and challenged the establishment. However, Westwood's influence stretches far beyond the realm of fashion. As an outspoken supporter of environmentalism, human rights, and social justice, she has utilized her platform to champion causes important to her heart, motivating a new generation of activists and change makers to speak up. Her unabashed devotion to self-expression and originality has made her a role model for millions worldwide, demonstrating that fashion can be a powerful force for social change. The impact of cultural icons such as the Beatles, David Bowie and Vivian Westwood cannot be emphasized. Their revolutionary work and bold devotion to self-expression influence their era's cultural environment, inspiring many artists, singers, designers, and activists to follow in their footsteps. Their legacy lives on in the music we listen to, the clothes we wear, and how we see the world, reminding us of the transformational power of creativity and the long-lasting effect of cultural innovation. A cultural revolution occurred on the bustling streets of Tudor and Victorian London, beneath the shadow of towering spires 
and amidst the din of ordinary life. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, London emerged as a beacon of creative brilliance and literary creativity. The city's lively theatre culture and rich literary tradition were essential to this revival, as they gave voice to decades of hopes, dreams and hardships. William Shakespeare's magnificent works epitomised the golden age of English theatre. Shakespeare, born in 1564, rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most acclaimed playwrights in history. His plays, known for their depth of character, poetic language and universal themes, continue attracting worldwide audiences. The Globe Theatre, located on the banks of the River Thames, was the pulsing heart of London's theatrical scene during Shakespeare's lifetime. Amidst the aroma of ale and the rustling of silk, audiences were transported to realms both familiar and magical, laughing, crying, and pondering the secrets of existence through play. Shakespeare's plays were more than just entertainment. They provided insights into the human soul, Shakespeare's works, ranging from the sad romance of Romeo and Juliet to the introspective meditations of Hamlet, delved into the depths of love, power and mortality with unsurpassed complexity. His enduring legacy continues to shape London's cultural scene and the world. As the 19th century arrived, London's literary environment underwent a metamorphosis spawning a new generation of writers eager to capture the spirit of Victorian society in all its beauty and contradictions. Charles Dickens was the most prominent of these writers, and his works vividly portrayed life in Victorian England. Dickens' novels, from the teeming slums of Oliver Twist to the haunting spectre of A Christmas Carol, shone a light on the socio-economic injustices and disparities of his period. Dickens's sharp observations and empathetic storytelling brought to life a cast of individuals who have become Victorian-era icons. However, Dickens was not alone in his examination of Victorian life. Writers such as Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot and Thomas Hardy contributed significantly to the literary canon, each with their unique perspective on the struggles and successes of life in 19th century England. London's theatre scene and literary tradition have left an indelible mark on the city's culture. London has been a hotbed of invention and innovation from the Globe Theatre to the West End, nourishing generations of writers, performers and artists. Shakespeare's and Dickens' works, as well as those of countless other playwrights and authors, are still widely loved and studied worldwide. Their themes and characters appeal to people of all ages and ethnicities, reminding us of the universal realities of the human experience. The spirit of the cultural renaissance lives on in London, where theatres and booksellers thrive and new voices arise to tell today's stories. From the laughter of a comedy to the tears of a tragedy, from the pages of a novel to the theatre stage, the stories of London's cultural renaissance remind us of the timeless power of narrative to reveal the human experience and inspire us to envisage a better future. In the shadow of towering skyscrapers and ancient monuments, a city stands on the brink of a new era. As London evolves and adapts to the challenges of the 21st century, the echoes of its past reverberate through its streets, a reminder of the resilience and tenacity that have carried it through centuries of change. As we approach the end of our journey, we find ourselves at the crossroads of history, where the past meets the present and the future beckons with limitless possibilities. In this final chapter, we reflect on our voyage through time charting London's progress from humble beginnings to the busy metropolis it is today. London, the city of contrasts and contradictions, has always existed in perpetual flux and alteration. From its humble beginnings as a Roman town to its development to become a worldwide financial powerhouse, London 
has weathered historical storms and emerged more robust and resilient than ever before. In this chapter, we will examine the causes that have molded the city's future, from the political upheavals of the Tudor period to the Industrial Revolution that drove London into the modern era. We will analyze the social, economic, and cultural elements that have fueled London's growth and development, and the difficulties and opportunities that await the city as it evolves in the 21st century. Join us as we reflect on past lessons and look ahead to the future, where London stands out as a beacon of hope and promise in a constantly changing world. As we bid farewell to the city that has been our constant companion on this journey, let us remember that London's story is far from done. It is a story of resilience, adaptation, and limitless promise. It is a story that is unfolding by the day. London, a city rich in history and tradition, has gone through a spectacular period of evolution and transition over the centuries. London's story is one of tenacity, flexibility, and creativity. From its humble beginnings as a Roman colony to its rise to global superpower status. This final chapter summarizes the critical milestones in London's history, tracing its development from antiquity until the mid-20th century. The history of London begins with the arrival of the Romans in 43 AD, when they established the settlement of Londinium on the banks of the Thames. Londinium, a key crossing point and commerce hub, swiftly evolved into a bustling metropolis thanks to its network of roadways connecting it to the rest of the Roman Empire. The building of sites like the Roman Wall and the Temple of Mithras laid the groundwork for London's future growth and prosperity. London became England's political, economic and cultural centre during the medieval period. The Norman conquest of 1066 brought about significant changes in the city with the construction of the Tower of London and the establishment of Westminster Abbey, securing London's place as the seat of power. The expansion of trade and business during the Middle Ages resulted in the formation of guilds and markets. At the same time, the Magna Carta of 1215 established the rule of law and individual liberties. The Tudor era was a time of unprecedented development and upheaval in London's history. During the reigns of monarchs such as Henry VIII and Elizabeth of Up, the city thrived as a hub of commerce, culture, and innovation. The creation of prominent landmarks such as St. Paul's Cathedral and the Globe Theatre represented London's rise as a worldwide city. At the same time, the English Reformation and the establishment of the Church of England altered the country's religious landscape. The Industrial Revolution caused a seismic transformation in London's economy and society. Driven by steam and coal, factories and mills sprung up around the city. The expansion of industry resulted in tremendous urbanization, with millions pouring into London for jobs and opportunities. The construction of railways and bridges altered the cityscape, while technological and scientific advances established the framework for today's globe. London had contrasts and tensions during the Victorian era as it dealt with the problems of rising industry and urbanization. While the wealthy elite relished the pleasures of luxury and leisure, the working class faced severe living conditions and social injustices. Authors like Charles Dickens and George Eliot wrote about the plight of the impoverished and disenfranchised while social reform movements battled for change and advancement. The 20th century saw victory and sorrow in London as the city survived two catastrophic world wars and emerged as a global superpower. The bombings of World War II left their mark on the cityscape but Londoners remained resilient and fortified in the face of tragedy. London went through a period of reconstruction and rebirth after the war, as new industries and technology spurred economic growth and wealth. As we reflect on significant moments in London's history, from its inception until the mid-20th century, 
we are reminded of the city's ongoing spirit of resilience and adaptability. From its humble beginnings as a Roman colony to its rise as a worldwide metropolis, London has always been a city in transition, continuously evolving and reinventing itself to meet the demands of each new era. As we look forward, let us recall the past lessons and embrace the changes that lie ahead, knowing that London's narrative is far from done. It is a story of creativity, variety and limitless promise. It continues to inspire and enchant us all. London, a city of tenacity and grit, has survived historical storms with an unwavering spirit that refuses to die. From the ashes of destruction to the pinnacles of prosperity, London has often proved its extraordinary ability to adapt and thrive in adversity. In this concluding thought, we look at the essence of London's resilience, tracing its history through victory and tribulation, and examining the characteristics that have allowed it to grow and endure. London has encountered several obstacles throughout its long and illustrious history, ranging from fires and floods to wars and economic downturns. Despite this, the city has stayed determined to overcome adversity and emerge stronger than before. One of the most prominent examples of London's endurance is the Great Fire of 1666, which destroyed much of the city and left tens of thousands homeless. Following the catastrophe, Londoners banded together to rebuild their city, transforming it into a modern metropolis that would be envied worldwide. Similarly, during World War II's Blitz, London faced constant bombing strikes that left most of the city in ruins. Despite the turmoil and damage, Londoners' spirits remained unbroken as they worked diligently to rebuild their homes and communities while resisting fascism's oppression. London's ability to adapt to changing conditions has played an essential role in its survival and development. From the Industrial Revolution to the Digital Era, London has welcomed innovation and growth, repeatedly reinventing itself to meet modern-day difficulties. During the Industrial Revolution, London flourished as a hub of trade and commerce, owing to the increase in industry and the expansion of the British Empire. The city's population grew as migrants from all over the country came to its streets to pursue opportunity and success. In the 20th century, London saw another revolution, from an industrial economy to a service-based economy, fueled by the expansion of finance, technology and other knowledge-based businesses. The City of London's emergence as a global financial hub solidified London's position as a premier centre of commerce and culture. One of London's greatest strengths is its variety and inclusivity, which have long been integral to the city's identity and success. From its origins as a Roman town to today, London has been a melting pot of cultures, languages and traditions, inviting individuals from all walks of life and celebrating its cosmopolitan background. London's diverse population has been a source of strength and resilience as people from many backgrounds have come together to share ideas, work on initiatives and create dynamic communities. London's cultural diversity is mirrored in its cuisine, music, art and fashion, making it a genuinely global metropolis that values the contributions of people worldwide. As we look ahead, London is at a crossroads, with new challenges and opportunities in an increasingly uncertain globe. From the continuous effects of climate change to the disruptions produced by technological innovation, London must adapt and evolve to serve even the 21st century. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, there is cause for optimism. London's eternal spirit, developed over centuries of resilience and adaptation, is as strong as ever, steering the city through the storms of change and blazing the way to a better future. As we say goodbye to the city that has been our constant companion on this journey, let us recall the lessons of perseverance, flexibility and inclusivity that London has taught us. And let us carry those lessons with us as we walk into the unknown. Certain that, like London, 
we have the courage and spirit to conquer any problems that may arise. As we near the end of our voyage through London's history, we are reminded of the rich tapestry of stories, events, and characters that have defined this lively city throughout the years. From ancient sites to modern marvels, London provides several chances for exploration and discovery, enabling tourists to immerse themselves in its intriguing history and culture. The towering spires of London's churches, the twisting lanes of its historic neighborhoods, and the crumbling relics of its ancient walls all witness the city's history. From the renowned Tower of London to the stately Westminster Abbey, the town has many old landmarks that testify to its rich history. Standing in the shadow of these ancient structures, one can't help but feel amazement and wonder, contemplating the lives of those who constructed them and the events that took place within their walls. Whether touring the Roman ruins of Londinium or admiring the medieval architecture of the Tower Bridge, travelers to London may journey back in time and experience the city's history firsthand. In addition to its old landmarks, London has many cultural institutions that honor its rich history and legacy. From world-class museums and art galleries to historic theaters and performing venues, the city provides countless options for artistic exploration and enrichment. The British Museum, with its extensive collection of objects and treasures worldwide, provides insight into the British Empire's global reach. The Victoria and Albert Museum's broad collection of art and design provides insights into human civilization's inventiveness and invention. And the Globe Theatre, with its replica of Shakespeare's original playhouse, transports audiences back to the golden age of Elizabethan theatre. While London's old landmarks may receive the most attention, the city also has a plethora of modern marvels that reflect its role as a global hub of invention and creativity. From the towering skyscrapers of the City of London to the elegant lines of the Millennium Bridge, the skyline exemplifies its unwavering spirit of growth and reinvention. Visitors to London can marvel at the architectural wonders of the Shard, the city's highest structure, stroll down the Thames to view the London Eye's distinctive silhouette, visit the cutting-edge Tate Modern Galleries, or see a performance at the Royal Opera House. Every city area contains evidence of London's continual progress and dedication to molding the future. Whether you're tracing Shakespeare's footsteps on the South Bank or uncovering hidden gems in the back alleyways of Soho, London offers limitless exploration options. So to everyone inspired by the stories we've told and the places we've seen, we say, go forth and explore. London awaits with historic sights and new marvels, a rich history and a thriving culture. There is no other city like it, and there is no better way to discover its treasures than on your own. Thank you for joining us on this journey through London's history. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing insights into the world's iconic cities. Until next time, continue exploring. Thank you for joining us on this incredible tour through London's history. As we conclude our investigation of one of the world's greatest cities, we are grateful for the opportunity to delve into the rich tapestry of London's past, present and future. Throughout our voyage, we have passed across centuries from the ancient Roman settlement of Londinium to the busy metropolis of the 21st century. We have witnessed the rise and fall of kings and queens, the ebb and flow of empires, and the relentless march of progress that has formed the fate of this extraordinary city. From the grandeur of Tudor palaces to the grit and grime of Victorian streets, London has served as a crucible of human endeavor, a melting pot of cultures and ideas that has captivated centuries. It is a city of contrasts and contradictions, where ancient traditions coexist with modern invention and the echoes of the past resound through today's streets. But our adventure continues further. 
as London evolves and adapts to the difficulties of the 21st century, there is still much to discover and experience, from the soaring skyscrapers of the financial sector to the bustling communities of East London, the city has possibilities and stories to tell. So, while we say goodbye to London, we ask you to continue exploring, to go into the hidden nooks and forgotten alleyways to discover the secrets and mysteries that lie beneath the surface of this dynamic city. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing insights into the world's iconic cities. Until the next time, keep exploring, discovering and dreaming. London's spirit, while ever-changing, is ageless, a beacon of hope and possibility in an uncertain world. Thank you for accompanying us on this voyage, and may your journeys be as rich and instructive as London's history.